Welcome to Little Steps Big Gains and our series on the evaluation of upper limb ataxia, where we're going to talk about tremors. Tremors. This is a really big word, and that's why we have an episode set for just tremors alone. We're not going to honestly dive really deep, but at least cover the specific types of tremors so we know what makes cerebellar tremors more unique than just, hey, they have a tremor. So under this big umbrella term, we have resting tremors, where the tremor occurs at rest just like often seen in Parkinson's disease. The tremor may be increased by stress or even the position that they are at rest. On the flip side, resting tremors, we have action tremors. These tremors kick in with action, with movement. That is also an umbrella term. Underneath that, we have three subtypes of action tremors. We have postural. So that individual may be fine at rest, but as soon as they hold a posture, usually sometimes it can kick in after 30 seconds, but that's when the tremor starts. Then we have kinetic, and this is a really broad term, but basically it's with movements. And then intention tremors. This is when the tremor kicks in during a goal-directed movement. No tremoring at rest, but it kicks in when we start to move and then it gets larger or bigger in amplitude the closer we get to our target. That is the type of tremor often seen in cerebellar ataxia, more often or not, intention tremors. So now that we broke down our big umbrella, resting action tremors, what are some medical diagnoses or clinical applications that we see? Well, we see Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, physiologic tremor, drug and metabolic induced tremor, and then cerebellar tremors. First, Parkinson's disease. This is what we often think of when we hear the word tremor, because Parkinson's disease has a resting tremor. The tremor is occurring at rest. However, it's not black and white. Individuals with Parkinson's disease may also have an action tremor. Talk about confusing, right? This usually initiates with a pill rolling, okay, kind of form like this, progresses to pronation, supination, and then flexion and extension of the wrist. Interesting, it starts on one side of the body. It can be exacerbated by stress. Even having an individual count back by sevens may increase the tremor or the position of the tremor. Now, it should be known that only 70% of individuals with Parkinson's disease present with a tremor. A lot of times individuals are misdiagnosed or missed because tremor is not the first sign or symptom that they exhibit. So not everybody with Parkinson's disease has a tremor essential tremors. Now things are not black and white, but usually essential tremors are triggered with action. Usually they're an action tremor and specifically posture. Holding up that posture like the Superman, you may see that tremor elicited or exacerbated in the hand and wrist. Now what makes it a little bit more unique to Parkinson's disease is remember Parkinson's starts on one side of the body, unilateral. Essential tremors is bilateral both sides of the body. It can also affect the head, the voice, and the lower extremities. Now one way that individuals are often diagnosed, believe it or not, is with a therapeutic trial of alcohol consumption. Physicians will have their patients um, trial two alcoholic drinks a day and see if they're responsive. Then that would indicate a positive diagnosis of essential tremor. However, it really should be known that only 50% of individuals with essential tremor are actually alcohol responsive. Enhanced physiologic tremors. This category is applicable to all individuals who get tremors from things like anxiety, caffeine, sleep deprivation, alcohol withdrawal, or some medical conditions like hypoglycemia. Next category is drug and metabolic induced tremors. Certain medications can have the side effect of eliciting tremors. Finally, cerebellar tremors, as cerebellar ataxia is the theme and the focus of this entire series. So cerebellar tremors are action tremors. They occur with action. They could be postural, they could be kinetic, but most often than that, they're unique because they're intention tremors. In other words, we don't have anything at rest, but it often kicks in with intention goal-directed movements. The closer we get to a target, that is an intention tremor, um, an indication of cerebellar ataxia. Other diagnoses might include multiple sclerosis, cerebellar strokes, brain stem tumors, or hereditary cerebellar disease or degeneration. 
And those are the main types of tremors. The purpose of this video is just to break down that huge umbrella term tremor so we know what makes a tremor within cerebellar ataxia an intention tremor different from a tremor from Parkinson's per se, what makes them different and how we can diagnose different types of medical conditions based on the tremors. If you found this educational, interesting, insightful, please press that like that is right below this video, subscribe to this channel, and share these free resources with others. I also have that Patreon platform where you can support these free resources. After this, the rest of this series is fantastic. We'll talk about screening tools and standardized testing. And then the next series, treatment of upper limb ataxia. That's going to be fantastic. While you're at it, check out other free educational videos and then free home exercise programs that has evidence to support it based on research studies for cerebellar ataxia as well as other uh, neurological conditions. Check that out here on Little Steps, Big Gains.